Hello everybody, and today I would like to welcome you all to the naval map of North Port, where I will be reviewing the map, talking about some of the things that I would possibly change on it due to issues with the map, and then tips for players who are on this map and want to do a little bit better, or have ideas of different ways to play it. So what is North Port? Well, first off, it's a battle rating 3.0 to 6.0 map. You only see it at these tiers of battleship short of the really, really early ones that keep getting down-tiered. We'll never see this map, and it only appears in the Domination Game Mode, which is the one with the three cap points. This is one of the bigger maps that you will encounter with your early Blue Water ships and your later coastal vessels. And as per spawns on it, you have one coastal boat spawn per team near the Bravo cap point. You have two destroyer slash frigate spawn points, on each team. Those are slightly outside of the main battle areas near the caps. You have one cruiser spawn zone that is far back in the map. And as per the caps themselves, a cap is, has a ton of open water with lots of space to maneuver in most cases. So you can have plenty of long range gunnery duels if you wanted to. B cap is fairly densely populated with small islands ringed by tall, larger islands that prevent other ships from shooting into it. So it gives the coastal boats and destroyers free reign to duke it out and knife fight and close range engage and everything else that they want to do without worrying about cruiser interference. And finally, there is Sea Cap, which has a few small islands, but it's blocked in on both sides by tall islands and ice, forcing a kind of corridor fight of close range destroyer fights, torpedo launches and Later on, cruisers will support the destroyers when they actually arrive to this cap. With that out of the way, let's get into my personal review of this map. Personally, I think this is a lot of fun. I do love seeing it pop up in queue all the time, but it does have its issues. Starting off, the cruiser spawns are way in the back, and this is fun because it lets you have those long-range gunnery duels that you miss on some other maps. And while that's happening and the cruisers are having their fun, the destroyers and the coastal boats can bomb around Bravo and Charlie fairly unopposed and fight each other to their heart's content in close range engagements without having to worry about a cruiser coming around a corner and smacking them immediately. The A cap is split away from the other two by a fairly good distance preventing a quick boat capture if the coastal boats get done with B fairly early. And most of the brawling around C and Bravo tends to be a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy taking my destroyers over here and just seeing how many torpedoes I can dodge while taking out the enemy destroyers. And especially once you move into Bravo and the island cover comes into the mix, it just becomes a whole mess of fun on that side of the map. One of the issues I do have with this map though is all the saleable space that is north, kind of northeast of C is basically a trap. It gets players to go up there if they don't know that they're going to be up there for a while sailing around doing nothing and it just denies people battle participation and damage and it really offers no strategic value to have a ship go up there because even if you get around to the other side of the enemy team you're right in their spawn so somebody's probably already got their guns trained on you and is ready to destroy you. And I've never really seen somebody duck through the ice to come back to the cat point, because usually by that time their team's overrun. The bigger issue I do have with this map though is that it is heavily north side biased. The north cruisers can almost immediately bear their guns on sea with a little bit of travel, and they can get to the cap way faster than the southern cruisers, which is huge for taking Bravo and Charlie, B and C, which are fairly close together. The southern cruisers basically have to sail around half the whole map to even get anywhere near B and C due to how the islands are staggered. Or not islands, the mainland sticks out down by them. The north cruisers also aren't prevented from maneuvering by any land when they do spawn in the long range gunnery duels, while the southern cruisers are forced to sail straight on to the enemy team to try to round that corner as fast as they can while probably getting shot at while only using their bow guns 
Or if they want to use broadsides, they have to sail only west towards A, giving them very limited room to maneuver and juke the enemy shots. The northern destroyer spawns are also closer to the B and C caps, and they're also stacked together fairly tightly compared to what the southern destroyer spawns look like, especially with how out of the way the furthest south destroyer spawn is for the southern team. So they have a much easier way getting to these caps and securing the positioning advantage early on, and the Northern Destroyers also have a pretty easy way to cut the corner over to sea behind the island between the two spawns, so they can reinforce the sea cap a lot faster. The Southern Destroyers are basically wicked spread out. They take longer to get to sea, and they're hemmed in on islands by both sides, so they don't have a lot of room to maneuver. But they do have more access to Bravo. So if they wanted to push in and support their coastal boats, they have a lot more avenues to get in there. Not that they'll get there any faster than the northern destroyers, but they have a lot more avenues to get in there and surprise the enemy team. And they also have the advantage of firing broadsides when they go to uh, line up with sea, just because they're naturally facing that way when they come from their spawn point and they can get those side shots off before turning in and going to the cap, which also makes it easier to drop torpedoes and just cause general havoc to the team pushing in from the north. That being my general view of the map, there's quite a few things that I would change this map just to try to correct some of the issues that I just mentioned. If you shifted the map, either tilting it some way or even just adding in extra islands up top or cliffs just to cut off that north area to prevent people who don't know that it's a trap from going up there or even adding in more ice passages just to make it actually worth going up there or cutting into the ice at some point to kind of spice up the map a little bit. Or even the other option, if you didn't want to add in more maps, would be move the southern destroyer spawns instead of being way down there, up above the ice cliffs, and like I said, add in a couple more ice passages, and suddenly there's a reason to go up there because you have another avenue to get to sea, and it turns it into a whole nother area to fight over as a strategic advantage that can definitely switch up the game if somebody doesn't have a destroyer team up there. And then on top of that, if the destroyer spawns did get moved, you could shift the cruiser spawns to the southwest of the old destroyer spawns, which keeps them still quite a distance back from A, it, but it gives them more equal opportunities between the two cruiser spawns to maneuver and utilize their firepower, rather than one side being forced to basically cross their own T and go bow on the entire time while the other enemy team can just unleash every gun they have on them. If none of that happened, at least the southern DD spawns could be clustered closer together, just to help them out a little bit more with grouping up and getting to the Bravo and Charlie points, and just normalizing the map a little bit more, rather than that one destroyer spawn being way off to the side. Now, as per the structure of the map itself, behind the southern destroyer spawns is a port structure that rather hinders the southern destroyer movements if their spawn gets pushed through Bravo or Charlie. Uh, they really have nowhere to run and nowhere to turn around, especially if a lot of their destroyers have long turn radiuses or stock turn radiuses. And you'll find a lot of people running into that port structure as they try to get away from the enemy team that is right on top of their spawn. I guess this could also be fixed by widening the area between the mainland and the islands that encircle B, but I'm not sure which one would be easier depending on if this map's based on real life or not, if it'd be easier to shift the port somewhere or easier to just widen it a little bit. And going off of that with another change that I guess wouldn't work if it was a real life influenced map, would be the removal of that giant southern peninsula that blocks the southern cruiser spawn so much and hampers their movement, or even just making a passage behind it 
turning it into an island, maybe with a very tall bridge between the two where cruisers can cut over towards Charlie and not be basically crossing their own T the entire time. It It's definitely the biggest problem with this map as per why the northern side has a lot more advantage, but it's not the only one. If it is a real life influenced map, it wouldn't be the change they need, but it certainly would help. So I'm not entirely sure if that one's even a possibility. But regardless, those are the changes that I would make to this map if it was asked of me to suggest some changes to it. Hopefully I articulated those at least a little bit clearly so I could get my point across and I'm curious if somebody else would come up with something that is better or easier to do than what I suggested. Because I know a lot of mine were fairly complicated or relying on it being a fake map. Now, as per tips on this map, the first one I want to say is don't spawn in a destroyer in the two spawns that are closer to A and absolutely just rush the caps because you're just making yourself an easier target because you're the closest thing to the enemy cruiser spawn and they will shoot you first. Not just because you're rushing the cap, but mainly because you're 10 kilometers ahead of your team. That's a lot easier for them to hit. And most of the time you're sailing in a straight line to try to get to A as fast as possible. And as soon as you try to cut back, you've lost a bunch of speed and probably gotten connected with a couple shells and you're just devastated by that. So I would not suggest doing that. And also, if it wasn't clear already, do not go to the areas north of C. It's like I said, it's a trap to take you out of combat and deny you battle participation and it gives you no strategic advantage to go up there or really to cut through the ice passages in there. Continuing on with the sea cap, sometimes it's better as a destroyer player for you to get a full rack of torpedoes down the sea corridor before you try to rush in and knife fight ships just because if they're not expecting them they could be quite devastating and even if they don't outright sink the enemy destroyers, there's going to be somebody crippled for you to clean up. And a lot of times the destroyer fights close range will not have very many torpedoes launched between them. Just because since most torpedoes are center line on your ship, that's where most players are going to aim first because of the aim assist. And chances are your torpedo launchers are just going to be ineffective because they are knocked out. <laughs> Another good tip for the sea cap, if you do get to spawn on the northern side as a cruiser, don't immediately rush into the sea cap unless it's already fairly overrun. You can sit back slightly where it's more open and actually utilize your broadsides rather than having to push in and only use your front guns or swing back and forth a lot to try to get your rear guns into the fight. And it avoids you being close range torpedoed if one of the destroyers got past your own and decided that was the best way to take you out. It does give you a little bit more room to dodge enemy torpedo spreads as well, as long as you're still maneuvering around fairly consistently and keeping an eye out for those long underwater sticks of death. <laughs> Moving back down the map to A and B, if you do spawn on the northern side as a destroyer in the closer spawn to A, do not push down the side of Bravo outside of the islands towards the A cap. Once again, it makes you a really easy target for the southern team's cruisers. Not only are you close to them at this point, the other thing is you're hemmed in by islands now. You have a couple in front of you providing cover, but you cannot turn out and dodge that way. And all in all, it makes you a very easy target, and you never really make it to Bravo for the most part. Up next, if you do spawn south side in a destroyer, the northernmost spawn point should be your choice 90% of the time, because the southern destroyer spawn point is just way out of the way of anything, short of maybe pushing for A late game if you absolutely needed to, but really it's fairly ineffective in most cases. In general, on this map, you want to try to control B and C as they are closer together, and A is usually a wild card, 
there's been some map or some games where I've never seen the A cap even taken by either team just because they were so focused on B and C and A cap was way out of the way in most cases. Another thing to keep in mind when you're fighting for Bravo or capping it or whatever else you're doing in there is watch out for shots over the islands from cruisers supporting their team or just trying to prevent you from taking it into Bravo. Some of those islands have low points in them that cruisers can sneak shots over until they get closer to them. And there's been many times where I've surprised a destroyer with a quick salvo from a cruiser and just decimated them because they really didn't expect it coming over the islands and actually hitting their ship. So keep it in mind to just keep your head on a swivel in case you see some incoming shells so you don't get wrecked before you take your cap point. And last but certainly not least, if you do take C with whatever ship you are in, don't immediately rush the enemy spawn. They do get spawn protection and it leaves you very vulnerable to a ship spawning right on top of you and just dumping a load of torpedoes into your side before you can even retaliate. And even if you try to retaliate with torpedoes of your own, there's a good chance they're still spawn protected. I would highly suggest pushing into B and supporting that first and at least getting that cap secured and then you still have shots out of that to support your own team and shoot into the enemy destroyers that are trying to come in and take the cap points from their own spawn. So highly suggest doing that instead of just bum rushing their spawn and getting yourself torpedoed. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. This is an idea that I kind of have been tossing around for a while now. I wasn't sure if, how I was going to pull this off. Hopefully you guys enjoyed do enjoy it and I'll make more if you do but either way good luck out there guys hopefully some of this helped and I'll see you next time